Did you know that there's a mini split AC system that can run off the batteries in your RV so you don't need an inverter or a generator? I was surprised to see how many options there actually were. <laughs> How's it going? I'm Jared Gillis. Welcome to another All About RVs. Today, I want to share with you some thoughts and some solutions for using your air conditioning in your RV off-grid. Now, there's going to be some things that we can do to use your current system, your current setup, but then we're also going to look at some systems like a mini split system built for RVs. We're also going to look at systems that run directly off of your batteries and you don't need your inverter at all or a generator. Yes, a mini split system that operates off of the batteries in your RV. Now, the thing to keep in mind when you're running your AC off-grid, off of solar or off of a generator, there's always going to be a, a cost involved here. So sometimes that cost might be a, a literal cost of dollars. Some of these things might be really expensive. Some of these might cost you uh, having to bring along extra weight or having to use a generator or haul that fuel around. There's going to be a cost involved in each one of these solutions, but it's tailoring it and figuring out what works for you and what you're, you're willing to do in order to have this luxury of having AC off-grid. So almost all these we're going to be talking about aren't going to be using a generator, but the generator is usually the easiest solution. So I'm just going to say that one up front. Using a generator to power the AC in your RV is, is going to be the least expensive, most noisy, so that's going to be part of the cost there, way of using the AC in your RV. So you can look at this as a menu, see what appeals to you and what might fit your situation. So before we get all the way to the battery operated mini split for RVs, what we currently have on RV is just the AC that came with it. We have the Coleman Mach 15,000 BTU AC unit. Uh, we have the MicroAir Easy Start installed on it to help bring those amps down when we're starting it off grid. The MicroAir Easy Start is the most effective way to bring down those starting amps for the AC unit. So that coupled with our inverter setup with our 315 amp hour battery bank allows us to run our AC off grid if we want to. It's not very sustainable because we have 600 watts of solar on the roof and using that equation going through that, it is a losing battle if we try and run it for long periods of time. But if we wanted to run it for a couple of hours while it's sunny, we have enough solar to be bringing it in to replenish a little bit that we could run it for a couple of hours and then we'd have to figure out a different solution. So here's a really important point is how do we make this sustainable? Because that would be the goal. So number one, we could look at it as you can add more solar onto the roof as long as you're willing to always park in the sun to be able to catch that, that solar uh, you can increase the size of your battery bank, which all these things are going to add to the cost of your system. But one of the important things is you can look at the efficiency of your AC unit. Finding an AC unit that is more efficient can allow you to run longer, be more sustainable. So our mock AC unit is more efficient, definitely, than the Furion one that we had on the last RV. It's by no means the most efficient, but it's more efficient than what we've had before. I would say that, that Furion is kind of the middle of the road. So some of the other AC units for RVs that might be more on the efficient side is the Atwood Air Command. They have a 15,000 BTU model and a 13,500 BTU model. The 13,500 BTU model looks like it would have a little bit more efficiency while it's running. And same with the Coleman Mach Power Saver. This one has an 11,000 BTU, a 13,500 BTU, and a 15,000 BTU unit. So looking at these numbers, it looks like I would save a little bit by switching over to something like this. It's, it's not enough for, to make me want to switch, but if I was getting a new unit, uh, I might want to look at one of these that's a little bit more efficient. So for example, if my AC is running and it's pulling 1,500 watts, and if I had one of the more efficient ones and it's pulling 1,300 watts, that would be like an extra couple of panels up there for solar on the roof. Now, because of this large power draw for running the AC, you've seen people switch over to mini split systems in the RV that are meant for a house. So sometimes uh, they'll put it on the front of a travel trailer, on the, the back of the bumper of the RV, or take a bay in the bay of a class A and be able to have that outside unit be able to vent outwards. Now that brings us to a mini split system that's designed for an RV. It actually works off of 12 volt so you don't even need an inverter. It's actually really kind of interesting 
interesting and kind of compelling. And the outside unit can be mounted in any position. It could be mounted under the RV, it could be mounted on top of the RV, it could be mounted vertically. The options to mount it are whatever fit your situation. Now I'm sure you've seen a mini split system before. It has two parts of the unit. You have the unit that mounts outside and then the head that mounts inside for the whole system to be able to work. Now the catch with this unit is it's not as big as the other one. So where we have a 15,000 BTU unit or we were talking about a 13,500 BTU unit AC, uh, this one is only 6,000 BTUs. But your power consumption is gonna be significantly less. So it's gonna be 795 watts to be able to run this unit. And it actually has a variable speed compressor in there that we're going to start seeing in these other units. Uh, so your power consumption could go between 25 to 66 amps coming off of your battery, somewhere in that range. So in my mind, this is a solution that might be better for a smaller RV or if you're just trying to cool off one room. So you, you just want to be able to cool off the bedroom so that you can be able to sleep at night, be able to get that temperature down so you're not just sweating as you're trying to go to bed. So uh, this wouldn't be something that can cool the entire RV that we have. It's not going to cool down a 35 foot fifth wheel, but it could probably cool down our bedroom just fine and be very efficient at that. So this one's really interesting because you don't need an inverter. You can install it however you would need and you can buy it directly off of Amazon. All these that we've talked about so far, you can buy off of Amazon, even the Micro Air Easy Start. I'll put links down in the description to everything that we've talked about today. But now that we're talking about these DC air conditioners, it takes us in a different direction. And this one at $1,600 is on the lower end of the cost for these battery operated AC units. And I believe all these battery operated ones that we're gonna be talking about actually have a very variable speed compressor, and that's what allows them to be a little bit more efficient. They're just not max on all the time. They can bring themselves down and use less power and keep it comfortable in there using less power out of your batteries. But the next closest one to price would be the Dometic RTX 2000. This one's a 6,824 BTU unit. This one is interesting but strange because of the way that it mounts on the RV. This one mounts on the roof of the RV like your typical AC unit for an RV would be, uh, but you have to get that DC power up there, which is not typical in an RV. The opening that the, the vent comes through for it to be able to operate is right around 14 inches, but it's just like a half inch bigger than your typical opening on the roof. And then it has bolts that go wider than that that would have to go through your roof into the RV to bolt on. So this is better for like a, a camper van build or a semi truck so they don't have to idle to have the AC on inside. So that brings us to the last two solutions that I wanted to talk about. This next one is the most powerful and the last one would be the most efficient. So the Nomadic Cooling 3000 has 11,830 BTUs in this unit. It's not a cheap unit at 4,290. These things are starting to get really pricey. But the question is, do you build a bigger system inside of your RV with batteries and solar panels, or do you buy a unit like this? That's going to vary depending on every single person that is out there. So I thought I'd just present all these options that I've found. So as a comparison of what this would be pulling out of your batteries for it to operate, if the temperature is around 85 degrees outside and it's on eco mode, it'll only be pulling out between 33 to 55 amps out of your battery bank. When we're running our AC on our RV, if it's on, it's pulling about 120 amps, depending on the temperature outside. Now, if you were to have the nomadic unit on high at 85 degrees outside, that's the outside temperature, it would be pulling 65 amps out of your batteries. So that's another thing to keep in mind. The hotter that it gets outside, the more these AC units consume. That's across the board, whether it's the standard ones on top of the RV or these battery powered ones. The hotter it gets outside, the more power you will draw. Now that brings us to the last unit, which I think is the most efficient. It's the most expensive. It's made in Arizona and Tucson, made in the United States. It's the Cruisin' Comfort, and it has 8,000 BTUs for its cooling capacity and runs off of 45 amps out of your batteries for that. Now, from what I've seen, they have two different units, and this one's interesting because it can mount, the outside unit can go underneath the RV, it can go on the back of the RV, it can go on the roof of the RV, uh, but that inside unit isn't a head that you have to mount somewhere on the inside. It can actually go in a storage area down below, and you can duct it to where you want that cool air to go. So you don't have to have something sitting on your roof you don't have to have something taking up more space that would be utilized in another way. If you have a storage area that you can tuck that inside unit, you can mount this unit in a lot of different scenarios. 
So while this one is obviously the highest price, it gives you the, the most amount of install options and it gives you the maximum amount of efficiency. So this is the main menu of what is available out there for RVers to use their AC off-grid. So choose what works for you. For us, we're probably just gonna stick with our AC unit that's on the RV with the soft start, the three line energy batteries, and our multi-plus inverter. Those all pair really well together and we just limit the amount that we actually run it. If we wanna run it for longer, then it's time to pull out the generator because that's gonna be the cheapest, easiest way to operate the AC in your RV. So I think that's gonna do it for today. I hope you guys like this video. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Uh, hit that subscribe button if you wanna see more videos about RVing. And if we don't see you on the road, hopefully we will. See you next video.